Good morning, everybody. Good morning to week 15 of our class. And uh, I see very few people here today. Is everyone on holiday mode? Or did your class get late, um, previous, previous class? Anyway, welcome to all those of you who come in on time. Welcome to the e-learning students as well. Um, we're on the week on week 15, the second last uh, class for this course, um, almost coming to the last part of our uh, course. Just an announcement, which I will also make uh, a little late uh, at the end when there are more students that are coming in. Your second assessment has been uploaded and uh, post today's class, um, please ensure that you complete your assessment before the due date. The uh, uh, you are unable to access the assessment. OK, I will I'll just look up the settings when I set the settings right. But uh, I, I will have a look at the at the settings. If uh, even others are not able to put it up, I will by the break time, I shall ensure that that gets done. Uh, the uh, assessment has also been put up for the e-learning students uh, after the um, uh, it, it will be put up for you as well. So please do ensure that e-learning students that you complete it by the 30th and uh, the online students as per uh, what's given on your stream. That's your last date. Um, so please ensure that it gets done and I will make sure that uh, uh, you're able to access it as well. Right. So uh, I hope we're all uh, OK and doing doing well. Um, quickly, just just to <clears throat> quickly reiterate what we did the last week, we were um, we were focusing on emotional wholeness. Uh, how do we maintain our emotional wholeness? And among the very many uh, points that we had brought about earlier, uh, we were looking. We had looked at crucifying the flesh. We had looked at. Um, uh, uh, the mind being the battlefield and how we could um, go about consecrating our minds. Um, and part of that was what we looked at uh, last week was how we live daily with a renewed mind. And we saw um, a few aspects of what it involves. We did say that a renewed mind is a process that is continuous. Um, which which includes receiving and growing in the knowledge of God. We looked at um, a part of it being the conquest of the mind, which we had done earlier, and also learning how to balance a renewed mind, um, the leading of the Holy Spirit, as well as our reasoning, and what are ways that we avoid being presumptuous um, as we learn to live through this renewed mind and how all of this interplays one uh, against each other. And uh, that's what we had focused on till last week. Um, today, we're just going to take um, one more aspect of the mind, which is to do with mental illness and mental health. And uh, this, is a, this is just a, a lot for our understanding as to where do we have or work with a balance of uh, helping those with, with uh, mental illnesses, maybe also recognizing certain common mental health problems, what are some of the reasons or causes for a mental illness, what is it that we do, what is it that we encourage uh, people to do is something that we are going to be looking at today. I know part of this is also something that we had focused on when we were doing Christian counseling, because it all has to do with the mind and the emotions. So we looked a little bit over there. So there may be a bit of an overlap on, on what we're going to be working out today, but I'm not going to go into as detail as we did over there, but just for us to really understand about uh, mental health and mental illness. Um, uh, so are we all? Yeah, I think there are a few more who've joined in. So welcome to those who've joined in uh, right now at class. So uh, 
we're, we're looking at the 10th uh, chapter on healing mental illness and we'll also be looking at uh, certain questions that that come in as a result with mental health and issues that are closely related to mental illness okay? now like all other kinds of issues and sicknesses and disorders like physical disorders uh, we also do see that people have mental health conditions and um, and it is common even among believers and among Christians to sometimes have mental health problems or mental illnesses and just like we would pray and declare healing and come minister to those who may have physical issues physical or health regarding issues that with their body we also do the same we do not see a distinction between what is of the body and what is of the soul we do uh, pray we do minister to those who are being um, held under some of these conditions and pray and minister healing expect healing for those who may be going through mental health conditions um, so as we pray and as we minister we are not just praying for 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 just that which is <clears throat> which may not have organic causes but also conditions and illnesses that have organic causes which relate to the brain or to the nervous system and we're going to be uh, you know just broadly looking at um, uh, some of this this today so so as we had spoken about uh, for those of you who may be in the class of uh, Christian counseling we spoke about general what are the various causal factors of mental illness or mental health problems and we had enumerated a few things the last time so mental health problems can occur one due to um, certain neurochemical disturbances in the brain there are neurochemicals called as neurotransmitters that help in all of the brain functions and these chemicals that are produced some uh, sometimes get there is a there is a malfunction in it and as a result of which it causes difficulty in the person's emotions the person's thinking capacity person's judgment memory so there are chemical disturbances that is a very biological causal factor to mental health issues so that's the first reason there can be uh, also uh, certain degeneration that happens in the in the cells in the brain cells that causes mental health difficulties and some of them can be tapped into as maybe dementia alzheimer's parkinson's a few just to name a few where there is a degeneration that happens um, in the cells of the brain that causes mental health disturbances there can also be physical causes or 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 you know organic causes for example let's say a brain disease or um, a certain injury external injury that happens to a person which has affected the brain and as a result causes um, mental health conditions or there can be um, even surgeries that take place because uh, maybe uh, with the with regard to, there are certain tumors organic tumors that that take place and as a result because of the tumor in itself or because of surgery in itself any kind of an invasive therapy that is taken place can bring about effects in the different parts of the brain that coordinate with one's thinking and one's ability to emote <clears throat> and behavior so these are some of the larger causes and we also do see that uh, there can uh, one of the causes or it a reason can also be 
the presence of of spirits okay of evil spirits that take over and uh, bring about a complete sense of disruption in the in the person's mental health system uh, what we need to be careful to understand is not to attribute all kinds of mental health problems to the demonic or to evil spirits uh, we, we we need to be sensitive as well as careful to not at all points direct or say that is just the causal factor however we have uh, uh, jesus has given us the authority to speak and command and cast out every kind of spirit that that may be functional in 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 a person or even to command or to declare healing for any of these causes that we spoke about and that's what we um, we we should be we we should gear ourselves to do okay um Shri Kumar, I can, may I take a question in a bit? I'll just complete and then... Sure, Pastor. Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so when we are... Um, so when, when, when we are ministering healing, just like how we... You know, if you do know, if you are aware of a cause or of a reason as to why such and such a thing has happened, you can you know speak directly to that like if if you do see a chemical imbalance or you know th there is there are indications that it is it is uh, as a result of certain maybe certain external injury or it is an indication that it is something that is degenerative uh, like like th through certain tests that actually tells you that it is degenerative there is what what you can do is take authority and command over the person, command um, either a, a reversion of a reversal of uh, of things that that has been damaged as a result of um, uh, some kind of an organic cause or some kind of a physical uh, issue or physical injury or something that's probably also from birth. And we will we will talk about some of these these things um, as as we go down. So you could what we can we, what we do or what we can do is to also command um, anomalies in the body. So there are certain conditions that come as a result of chromosomal anomalies in the sense of the the genetic makeup in itself is disrupted is there is an anomaly and as a result there are conditions that uh, that come about for example some of the examples we see is um, uh, down syndrome or trisomy 21 there are quite a few in the chromosomal disorder but i think down syndrome is something that's most most relatable or maybe most understandable or maybe we have seen that so to be able to command that there be a change in the anomaly of the chromosome we we declare that to you know these are called creative miracles where we command um the reversal of maybe some of these chromosome chromosomes that has that has come up in excess or that which is which is lesser you know you you command that to to be reversed or we command um uh, you know certain anomalies that you may see as a result of uh, um, of these conditions like you would probably notice that because of the uh, chromosomal disability a chromosomal dis uh, anomaly you may see dysfunctions or disability like um, that there can be issues in down syndrome there can be multiple facial uh, uh, anomalies that you see or in, in cerebral palsy where you see that there are uh, conditions where there are weaker extremities, weaker limbs or the body has not developed to its full extent. So these are places that you know we we walk in faith and we command that the body be healed and function normally or come to a place of 
balance and development also commanding for chemical imbalances to come to a place of normalcy or to restore any kind of function that has been caused by either external or internal or biological so when we when we can do that we 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 must um come forward in in bringing about uh, that that kind of um um healing or knowing that god can deliver and there is nothing that is difficult for the lord to heal no matter what has been a causal factor yet also being sensitive however just being sensitive to the work of the holy spirit on what and how and the way that we do it and the kind of advice or the kind of follow ups that we give is something that we need to be extremely careful which is what we will we will be dealing with a little later as we go forward okay uh, shri kumar you could uh, bring me your question and open to to thank you pastor thank yeah. you thanks a lot pastor i just want to know um, uh, how can we come to a conclusion that uh, this is not demonic and uh, even when we see uh, a certain in certain cases when we can when we see that this is happening generationally they are carrying this kind of sickness um how can we come to a, and um, that's my question that how can we come to a conclusion that this is not demonic but this need a medical advice or this need medication so mm -hmm. i just want to know that uh, how how can as a as a counselor or as a uh, as a servant of god if i want to uh, help someone so how can i do mm. that thank you pastor okay all right so um i i'll, I'll probably give you certain distinguishing factors I'm, i may not be completely but I, but i think i I've, i've read an article for this and um, you know i'll try and search that out and maybe put it out in the stream but uh, i'll i'll probably put certain points that um, uh, that that i remember and you know i i have i have read through so the first and foremost thing is uh one of one of the understanding is how do we distinguish between a medical uh, a medical issue and something that is demonic now uh, one thing that we would see uh, that is that is a medical issue is you know it it is something a mental health issue that that covers uh, all aspects of the individual's life so it's not just probably in one area of their lives but it affects every other area of their lives um their biological functioning their personal hygiene their uh, their relational issues their uh, vocational abilities their ability to occupy themselves their mind their learning so when we do see that it is it, there is so much of an overall um contribution um you know that 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 is more likely now these aren't water tight compartments however i'm saying these are more likely to be something that probably is medical related whereas something that's more demon possessed or you know it is demonic i would say it's demonic is something that you could see that may come probably all of a sudden and uh, has certain um certain areas of of their lives that become very uh, oppressed or that which is taken over some part some area of their lives that's taken over but a lot of others seem to be functioning quite normally in itself okay the uh, other point of understanding that we have is when a person who is treated with medication we would we hope to see as best as a remission as possible and if that isn't there in its completion however i do want to even even bring about this one thing is that for people who have a mental illness there could be years of uh, not taking on treatment or an intervention and as a result that it it seeps into the personality of the individual 
so if there isn't medicine if, if there isn't treatment that is given appropriately or at um uh, at, at the appropriate time or at a time in the beginning at probably the initial instances it can ble bleed into the personality of the individual and at a later point of time the responses to medication may not be as you would see when there is appropriate treatment taken earlier okay so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm giving you this as a as also a clause to understand that that there could be times that people don't respond to medication because of this sometimes when they do not respond to medication let's say somebody um, has been has found has become ill and we have uh, taken in for help and medication but um, that the the remission hasn't been as expected that's we would also consider is there an added contribution of 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 it also being um, uh, demonic in itself and and that's when you would um, you know take the uh, go ahead and and also bring about a, a point of deliverance now do we always need to distinguish this is yet another question I think would come across in my mind is it something that we need to quest uh, to distinguish is uh, I'd say yes and no um, at first off like like in let's look at it in physical conditions okay let's look at let's look at a parallel of physical conditions now all of a sudden there may be people who talk about you know suddenly a grip on the back or as if there is a hold on the back right um, um because I've, I've i've had people come in and say that you know they've had a, a, a perfectly well okay back but suddenly over weeks now they kind of feel as if there's something caught in their back and um there have been a lot of medical treatments or you know uh, tests and diagnostics that have taken place and they don't find a cause so is is there a possibility of of uh, having an oppression so i would i would parallel that similarly with a mental health uh, uh, issue as well you know you may not find a specific cause that is causing a mental illness and so you know is there a contribution is is there a, a particular reason of them being um, of it being demonic as well so it, it, it may be important to make that distinguish uh, distinction, but as you're ministering, I think one of the most important things, just like how we would do in a physical uh, health issue, is uh, advise and you know encourage that they get whatever help that they may require, either medically or whatever kind of mental health interventions that that is suggested take that help and at the same time um, you know bring about a place for deliverance um, now and even as you're praying for somebody uh, again I think it is very important to be sensitive to uh, to how we do that you know when when we're speaking about a spirit of infirmity and that's something that we would we would even pray for someone who is physically unwell you know that the spirit of infirmity or the spirit of illness or the spirit of bondage to be to be cast out in Jesus name right but but being careful that we do not demean an individual by calling them demon possessed or uh, you know filled with the evil spirit but but doing it in the most respectful and uh, you know the least showy way as possible is is very important because there have been and and because you know we have been in this uh, you know helping people with with mental health issues there have been especially among believers among those who've been who've been in church where uh, there have been wrong advices and a wrong uh, way of dealing with with this has been given to them that there have been definite loss of uh, um, you know of one is trust loss of trust in in the entire system uh, of of healing and deliverance as well as in in how 
how they are looked at as people, you know, the kind of stigma that it brings about. So it is extremely important for us to be careful on how we do that. So what I'd say is encourage whoever does come to you, especially when, when they are, when, when there is a manifestation or when there is a mental illness or symptoms of signs and symptoms of mental illness that is brought forward, the first and foremost thing is encourage them to get that medical help. And at the same time, believe and pray in faith and, um, you know, come about with, form, with uh, deliverance prayers to cast out anything that uh, that may be that may be there or that may be taking on the um, the person or or is being where the person is being oppressed. So that's how I would I would bring about that answer. Now again to to bring about distinctions again, um, uh, you know, a mental a person. If you remember, we did actually talk about this earlier. Someone who is a believer in Christ cannot be demon possessed. Okay, they can be oppressed, but not demon possessed. So um, let's say believers who are going through mental health issues, right? Um, I think we need to clearly make that distinction there for because there have been cases now I've worked in a mental health institute and I've seen people actually profane and blaspheme the name of god okay and uh, there we do we do find that their spirits definitely are not maybe a lot of at least the cases that i've seen i have not been those who have been believers so we do know for for a fact that believers cannot be demon possessed however they can be oppressed and yes there can be mental health conditions so even like the spirit of um, uh, you know sadness or the spirit of depression um, the spirit of worry the uh, spirit of fear of anxiety all of that yes is something that that can grip people and, and not just and and it not just being manifested as a mental health but even among a normal population having those having those spirits so being uh, understanding the fact that those who are believers cannot be demon possessed which means uh, that's again a, a clear and a good distinction distinguishing factor that it is in prob probability it is a mental health condition which has a physical chemical whatever cause that we spoke about and not something that is um, that is uh, uh, demonic. So these are these are two, three points I can remember, but then I will I will ensure that I put up that article for you all to read. So that and it gives a, a few more uh, addresses, a few more things, which I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not able to remember right now. I hope I answered that uh, Shri Kumar. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, uh, just just for us to be also open to understand the kinds of disorders that is generally that that is seen, and how is it that we can, uh, what is it that we can pray for? Okay. So um, I, I'm just going to go on with the list that is written in the um on on your notes so okay, i'm just going to handle those and not really go on to anything more so the first one that's written is autism now autism uh, is uh, is considered as a developmental disorder in the sense of it uh, um, that there being issues in the way that the the brain develops which has caused significant difficulties in social and emotional interactions so that is a medical explanation of it so when we pray for those who are autistic i think one of the uh, prayers that we can or or how do we minister to them is that any kind of deficits that has come as a result of the developmental issue be reversed and there be a restoration of all the fac faculties that have been affected to be reversed is something that we could you know minister as we minister to people now i i personally i've seen a lot of people who are autistic especially uh, you know when when they are children and as they grow up you do find 
a lot of children with autism or the related spectrum disorders have have very special giftings either it's for music or it's for language or it's uh, it's for art it's for something that they are completely able to uh, you know hone and uh, and really master all right and i believe those are graces and giftings that god's given even those with those who are autistic and that gets used for the glory of god despite the kind of developmental issues that one may see okay uh, however we still walk in faith we still continue to pray <clears throat> and minister that anything that that is <clears throat> that is dysfunctional be restored back into its um, original functionality excuse me okay another condition that we are looking at is down syndrome so i did uh, i i spoke to you about this now this again is a uh, is a chromosomal disability where where there aren't the right number of chromosomes that make an individual and there are extra chromosomes that's in down syndrome or other chromosomes where some are replicated that there are three of, of the same chromosome and you see definite features not just physical features but there are also uh, intellect disabilities that may there how do you minister is you know again a reversal that uh, that the things that you know in the genetic material or in the chromosomal material that there be a reversal by the power of god and that's that's a prayer of faith that we are praying that we we pray that uh, you know things uh, go go to the place that god has designed for it next one is dyslexia dyslexia is um, uh, commonly known as learning disabilities where again this is uh, an uh, an impairment in for someone to to either to read, to write, to spell, or to have mathematical abilities. And this again is um, seen as a dysfunction in the learning capacities. And there again, you know, we pray that, uh, that, that we, we command and pray for the mind of Christ to be over them and to, to, for God to bring about a restoration of all that is lost. Then it become, comes Parkinson's, Parkinson's or dementia, Alzheimer's, all of that where there is a, uh, where there is a degeneration, where the, where the cells are slowly disintegrate, not disintegrating, they are being degenerated, right? They do not function as they should and there is a degeneration that takes place. And that's where again, you know, we pray that uh, all of this, that there be a reversal of it. Next, we're looking into major mental health disorders, which could be, which is either schizophrenia or mood disorders like bipolar disorders or um, uh, uh, depression. Um, okay, I, I look at that question, uh, Beth. Yeah, so depression, um, all of that, these are all mental health disorders. Now these, like we said, have different kinds of um, contributing factors and science has kind of looked at certain causal factors however not one of them can be pinpointed at and and these mental health disorders are considered one uh, to have biochemical causals like we said the um, neurochemicals that are there that are uh, uh, that are not produced in in uh, opt op to its optimum so these and, and as a result causes issues in their thought in their speech in their mood or bipolar disorders where there is uh, either there is mania or there is depression now these are in scientifically considered as biochemical disorders there are also there can also be contributions as a result of um, uh, psychosocial factors depending on family upbringing the kind of environment that they have been that that uh, has been has come by personal coping coping mechanisms that have been used over years so there can be and these are you know they are so uh, the way that they present itself is not 
it's not something that one can predict. So schizophrenia can, uh, a person with schizophrenia can be affected as young at, at an age of 14 and 15 and 16, or as, uh, you know, as elderly as a, uh, as a 50, 60, 70 years. So how does it present itself? Why does it come at the point of time? It is maybe quite difficult to pinpoint. Nevertheless, whatever, like I said, whatever the causal factor of these conditions, we have, we encourage medical help. We encourage praying and believing in faith and, uh, um, you know, walking in in our spiritual disciplines and in our spiritual practice so that's what we would we would encourage people to do okay uh i think there's a question that beth had um okay one of the apc publications i can't remember which mentions that down syndrome may be demonic i find that hard to agree with as psalm 139 tells us clearly that God knits us together in our mother's womb. Uh, it, it would be good if you can tell me where you read that. As far as I understand, I'm sure that's not something uh, that has probably been thing. But I'd be open to to maybe know Beth which publication that is. Um, yeah. So so uh, I think I have a take on this as well. It was last year sometime, maybe in the healing one. Okay, so let me let me probably have a look at that because I I can't remember having read that anywhere. But um, you know, I, I think we need to also understand that any kind of disability that we do see, whether it's Downs or even physical physical disabilities, um, cerebral palsies, um, um, those who have been born with mental mental. Uh, uh, mental retardation, you know, the challenges, intellectual challenges, uh, I, I say is, you know, anything that we see, the sickness and the disease in the world is a fallout of sin, okay? And uh, man with the choices that they make, uh, yes, can bring about, can birth about things uh, in sin. So, uh, for example, uh, um, you know the 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 kind of where where do we see or at a large population of those who you would say have challenges mentally, especially in especially in their intellectual abilities, are those where there is uh, marriages between close relatives, okay, or uh, the 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 kind of genetic pool seems to be a kind of intermingled in itself and that in itself causes it so you know looking at man and their choices brings about a lot of lot of things so consequential uh, events that takes place as a result of of uh, of the sin that we are in and, and the sin that we live in so that's the take even i have um uh, and that it it may not be it's not necessarily that it is demonic but then i will check that um uh, beth then probably come back to you on uh, just to read a context of what what was said there uh, as well so i shall i shall look into that Beth. okay uh we're going to the other certain other disorders of um, uh so when we classify mental health disorders we classify them into two uh, either those with major mental health disorders and those with minor mental health disorders. This is just for your classification. Now, major mental health disorders are generally those where there is a loss of reality, whereas minor mental health disorders, the common ones being anxiety, panic attacks, um, PTS, post-traumatic stress disorders, uh, OCDs, all of that are the person is well within the reality of the world that they live in. But whereas in uh, major mental health disorders, there is a loss of reality. That is, uh, you know, the kind of symptoms that they express could be very bizarre, could be quite, quite absurd um, and not plausible. Uh, and, and that in itself, so if, if those symptoms are being treated by medicines and you do see a remission, you know, you begin to understand that they are a lot probably physical 
causes there are chemical causes and 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 that's why you do see uh, you know a definite remission of it okay but uh, uh, so when we are looking at minor mental health disorders which being anxiety um, panic attacks ocd ptsd these are all of or are all um, uh, where the person is within the reality but unable to function because of a specific symptom either of the anxiety or the in OCD it is the ruminations or the or the obsessions or the continuous um, uh, irrational repetitive intrusive thoughts that come about that becomes very that that triggers the internal uh, system in itself so all these are you know just a place where they they feel unable to function on a normal regular basis because of what they're experiencing either the anxiety there or either the the trauma that that continues to bother them either through nightmares or pictures or images and uh, or the the obsessions that are there now in all of these cases like we said again it is important that you consider and help them to take the appropriate medical treatment um, but to continue to speak in faith that whatever they are being oppressed by you know the, the very fact of it being uh, them having anxiety in itself kind of builds up uh, what is what is anxiety it's all about worry about uh, generalized worry about what's going to happen so the more that there is that is the mind that gets cluttered with that fear of what's going to happen it you know we've learned that it opens the door into for the evil one to enter now the evil one is not respective of someone saying oh he's got an anxiety disorder so i'll keep away from him no it doesn't happen that way right it, they are just looking for 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 ways to uh, to to bring bring people out in in fear and submission to them so it may have initially started off with probably uh, something that's been environmental but then in time as they do not renew their mind they do not stand in a place of um, uh, resisting these thoughts it opens the door to the enemy to walk in and and then it becomes a lot more you know th th there is a th I mean, it, it becomes a lot more complicated. There is the personal struggle that they have, as well as where the enemy has has got got hold of that that situation. Okay. Now, these these conditions, uh, as as you would see, um, uh, uh, so I, I'd like to bring about some understanding of this. Is that not all conditions bring people to a place of absolute debilitation? Okay. Uh, you will see people can function in 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 areas of of importance, especially those with anxiety, those with PTSD, those with OCD. Generally, can function at at a at a good level, you know, without maybe without probable active treatment. However, it gets it gets extremely difficult at that point um, point of time. Okay, um, so so being being uh, cognizant of the fact that people with this kind of conditions you know are still people one they uh, they they do have a condition or whatever it may be that uh, uh, that that can have varying degrees of um, debilitation or varying degrees of dysfunctionality that's a better word varying degrees of dysfunctionality However, we continue to pray and um, build up their faith to come to a place of complete restoration and wholeness. Okay. Uh, yes, Christopher, I think you have a question. Christopher? Yes. Uh, can you hear me, Pastor? Uh, not very clearly. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you now. Yes. yes. Go ahead. I just ahead. wanted to get more at some more clarification about uh, you mentioned about um, how um, how sin could you know play a part in uh, you know some of these outcomes, um, and also I guess related to that, um, you know, where uh, 
the generational curses also could um, play a part play, play a part in this mm. so just want to understand a little, little more about the, the these two these two aspects okay so um uh, what is okay so so to bring about sin is um, you know when when god created adam and eve he created it to be a perfect world okay but um, because of sin there have been consequences the consequences of sin consequences of 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 what happened or the 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 sin that took place we all there are it, it there is a consequential um, event that takes place so this is just not it just does not refer to your physical death but when people continue to live in a life of sin um, so I'm, I'm to to probably give you examples like for example uh, the sin of incest okay that giving rise to um, uh, um, uh, you know, when, when there is a progeny that comes by, there is the consequence of that sin, you know, and, and also the physical consequence of maybe um, uh, coming together when, when you are a blood relative, there is a definite physical consequence that takes place. Whereas spiritually, it is something that is sin. So there is, there are different, uh, there are different situations where people involve themselves in sinful uh, actions, sinful behaviors that bring about certain consequences, that bring about natural consequences as well as spiritual consequences. So I, I'm not saying that all conditions are this way, but uh, you know, over time, over time, what happens is you know when when sin continues to be, when you engage in continuous sin, there there can be consequences that happen. For example, um, let's say. Uh, um, you know, someone. So this is this is just just a maybe quite an unrelated example, but someone who consumes, let's say, a substance, okay, uh, keeps consuming the substance, and there are natural consequences that occurs within the body, right? And they become responsible uh, for the fact that they have not used their body as a good steward. And as a result, open their selves to some kind of a mental health condition. Like, for example, those who, um, especially in alcohol or drug abuse, constant, regular, frequent use of these substances has the potential for them to have a psychotic episode or to have a psychiatric condition, which could be any of these. You know, so there is a lifestyle that that is not godly that is not righteous and you reap the consequences of your own lifestyle of probably something that you've engaged in that has that is not acceptable to god something that that is not right in the eyes of god and then you reap the consequences of of such behaviors okay so uh, some of these conditions is something that we see can have an effect because of the original sin of man and that which continues to play on on a regular basis that b brings about consequential events as a result i hope i made that clear christopher this fin part I just want to understand a little more on the generational curses and um, how it could it could uh, also uh, you know bring about um, mental disorders. Could, could, could that could that attribute to mental disorders? Hello. Sorry, I think I got disconnected. Yes, I'm sir. sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Christopher, yeah. did I answer that? No, no, yes. So, what I wanted to just uh, also, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, the other, the second part of the question was with regards to generation, generational curses, um, where uh, could could they attribute to uh, me mental illnesses also, and um, you know. Um, where you know where even spirits could could manifest certain uh, 
mental disorders. Think about um, mental disorders. Yeah, so we just want to understand if, if that, that if that is something that um, that happens. Mm. Okay, so I I think um, you know there's um, uh, we have a book on breaking uh, generational bondages and curses, and that is uh, um, it is it is given uh, an understanding is given over there. Yes, I think it is a possibility that a lot of um, um, conditions get passed on. Uh, into generations and I think one of that some of that could be you know if, even when you look at it at the natural uh, level now this is this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of as I'm talking right now is that that when when you do a medical history or when you do um, a psychiatric history something that you will look off is to look at if there is a family history of the similar condition in the in the family or in the generations above Okay, so when you look at it medically, yeah, uh, you're looking at it quite, you know, if there is a genetic um, disposition to that is what maybe in medical science that you're looking at, is there a genetic disposition in that, like someone who's had maybe schizophrenia, probably two generations ahead, and you know, it has also been passed on. Yes, medically. It's something that um, that can get carried on into generations. And one of the classic examples is one of suicide. Okay, if you look at someone, it is interesting to actually, and there is research done on that to see if it becomes a pattern of coping in the generations above. And, and a lot of cases you will see that the, at it, it has either become a pattern of coping or there has been an attempt or there has been completed suicide within uh, in the family history. And I believe, uh, uh, you know, the fact of suicide in itself is something that that is that gets passed on. OK, and it becomes like like the spirit of taking away one's life is something that gets passed on. And it is important to break those those kind of curses. Or let's look at even things like pornography or different kinds of addictions, you know, that becomes um, although medical science does give addictions, alcohol addiction, uh, uh, the label of a medical disorder, like a disease. It is a disease. Yes, it is. However, we also need to see how we open ourselves to these kind of doors when, when there isn't a proper coping, when, when there are stress and issues that come in, rather than being able to come to a place of complete submission and trust to God, there is the taking on of a certain substance to fulfill or, or to come away from that emotional issue uh, that a person may be going through. So that becoming a coping becomes almost like an open door that that you know the al alcohol is one that is that is uh, being resorted to at every point of time so yes i'd say yes th uh, there are um, uh, generational bondages that can take place and and that's exactly why you know we need to come to a place where we bring about deliverance and uh, put to stop any kind of um, bondages that can be passed on from our generation, which we may know, may not know, but coming to a place of in faith, you know, canceling any of those um, influences in our generation and for the ones to come. Uh, Christopher, I hope I answered that. Okay, we'll stop for a break. It's uh, ten fifty-four on my clock. Uh, let's uh, take a break, and we will resume back at eleven four. <laughs> 